Could you just run over the design features of the new Alpair MS series drivers for us? Well, this is the, uh, the Alpair 11 MS for mono suspension. And um, it, I must admit, it's a design that I've really enjoyed working on. Um, the um, we were talking about magnet and magnet assemblies earlier, and of course we can see that this is quite a sizable magnet actually, although internally it's actually relatively wide diameter. So it's it's uh, as magnets go, it's it, in terms of its total volume, it's uh, it's not too big, thank goodness. And um, the main features, the main purpose of this driver. And the main feature of it is, of course, the negative camber cone, where the cone actually sort of bends back slightly on it, albeit slightly back on itself. And how that allows us to bring the coil forward and remove the rear suspension. Um, so we still, with this driver, we still have this, this quite large uh, um, mechanical X-Max. You know, it has the ability there to to uh, oscillate with a, with a degree of linearity and freedom that uh, you would normally expect in a driver um, uh, in, a, in a woofer but it, it exceeds 20 kilohertz so of all the drivers we produce today this is the one along with its smaller sis, smaller brother or sister the the Alpair 11 Alpair 7 MS this is the one I think that sort of excites me the most because um, in, in listening tests, um, it has a particularly, I think, a particularly sweet mid-range. Uh, most of that is down to the fact that the dust cap now is almost level with the, uh, with the forward uh, outer element of the uh, cone profile. So in terms of any uh, differential between the high mid-high range coming off the cap and coming off the actual cone itself they're almost absolutely in full alignment so you get a really really sweet telephonic band from it as well as the bass and the high um, airflow control has been high, a high priority so the rear of the uh, chassis is contoured away from the cone to allow for more efficient airflow um, similarly with the thin thin legs we it's a very open uh, open chassis design and of course when you look at the the coil at, uh, <coughs> when you look at the <coughs> when you look at the coil similarly it's vented so all of the uh, suspend all of the by by this uh, um, by the front surround here which we're particularly proud of because it's the best surround we've made actually it's extremely linear and required a, a mix of four different uh, synthetics to get it to work really well so this driver from the supply side manufacturing perspective takes us that one stage further in being able to do more with less it does require closer tolerance manufacturing and tooling costs of course are more more expensive with this type of unit but in the long run um, my hope is that end users will get um, a lot of pleasure from these drivers they are I believe very musical and um, at the same time we're, we're still all doing our bit to try to uh, to, to help our environment and, and, our, and, and our future for our kids and grandkids by, by making wiser use of materials and um, um, looking at ways of producing product that still delivers the performance people need and want but without burning resources or as many resources as we, as we do now. Um, in terms of in terms of um, actual performance gain, that that one is is is, is difficult to quantify. Um, as I've said, I think this this driver 
produces uh, a better mid-range, which is the, the most important aspect of uh, musical listening. Um, um, but what also excites me about it is it, 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 it does bass really well. Uh, now that we've managed to get rid of the uh, rear suspension, it's actually more linear in terms of its stroke performance compared to the old unit. If we if we look at if we look at um, the typical materials involved um, on a traditional driver, there's the spider, which consists of a woven material, synthetic or cotton can be both. That's then resin based and pressed, heat pressed. It has a different elastic property to the the uh, synthetic or butyl mix forward surround. So the this, the properties of excursion for this component are different for the properties of excursion for that one. They move differently. And inevitably, they end up sort of fighting each other. The other, the other problem you get when you're dealing with a traditional driver is that the, the, uh, the, um, uh, so the spider is actually bonded to the, to the actual coil, to the coil neck, to the coil body here. And uh, inevitably, when you're um, when you're converting energy from um, electrical magnetic energy into mechanical energy by, via the coil, and then transmitting that mechanical energy down the coil body into the cone, having a restriction around the coil body, a, f a physical mechanical restriction like that, means that you endure greater losses, mechanical losses from this side of the coil. The operational side of the coil to the delivery side of the coil there. Now with the new driver obviously all of that is eliminated because it goes from that coil direct to the cone with nothing interfering with it. So from a mechanical, pure mechanical point of view this driver uh, is in itself when it comes to uh, mechanical efficiency and, and uh, mitigating losses this driver will always be more efficient than, than a standard driver. So um, the, 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 uh, the only thing with that is that when it comes to uh, conversion into sound wave energy, um, you're talking about amounts of power that are so small that it's very difficult to measure the, 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 the property differences between a twin suspension and a single suspension driver. But nevertheless, um, um, it's a mechanical step forward um, that's uh, very desirable. Will this produce as much bass as, a, as an equivalent size mid, mid woofer or mid bass? Or, uh, the answer is uh, in most cases yes, may even do actually slightly better depending on what type of driver it's compared to. But certainly with an excursion of this, this, uh, this level here down to its arrestor, which is almost eight millimeters one way, um, providing it's used sensibly because this is not a subwoofer, <laughs> It's a, um, it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a driver that's, um, you know, sort of mid-sized at best. So you, you have to use it, you know, common sense has to be applied. If you treat it as a rock and roll unit, then you should be looking at subwoofers and something bigger anyway. But if for general music where some bass is applied, um, then this will perform just as well as, as a, um, as a, as a, uh, two driver combination with say some like a 13 centimeter woofer and a, and a, and a one centimeter or three quarter centimeter uh, 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 tweeter. This will have this, you know, pretty much as much combined frequency as those two drivers will. Uh, it will handle um, the type of power that you would expect those two, those, that double combination driver to handle. And um, Unlike the two driver combination, there'll be no network, there'll be no crossover that, you know, starts messing around with the signal. So whatever you feed this driver um, from your source and amplifier, you're going to get a, a, a purer output and therefore probably make it easier for, to, for, you, for the end user to tune and um, modify their system to get the desired sound they want. Um, so... Um, Yes, I, I can safely say that, uh, you know, it's, uh, 
it's a it's a driver that I've uh, along with the team I've enjoyed doing. Um, probably one last one last thing that's very interesting about this driver is that typically um, earlier experiments, not just by ourselves but by other companies using single suspensions, has always resulted in them having to apply a ferro fluid, a, a fluid um, into the um, into the coil gap um, to act as a damping material uh, to aid the operation of the driver. Um, ferrofluid has a, has a low but nevertheless has uh, some degree of toxicity. It's um, difficult to manage and um, should it be spilt it sort of goes all over the place. So we've managed to produce these drivers without the need for any additional damping inside the coil gap. So these really are a pure single suspension driver. They really are mono in every sense of the word. There's nothing in the gap but air in which the flux density can operate. One other feature of the driver, or perhaps some would say the main feature of the driver, is this negative camber cone. I mentioned it earlier. Um, effectively, this, this driver allows the sound the sound bubble, I can, let's call it a bubble for the moment, every time it operates it, it's, it's projecting sound waves and they come out in the form of a bubble and they sort of exponentially grow. That's how all drivers work pretty much and um, this, this cone allows for the, 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 the dispersion to go greater than 180 degrees by virtue of the fact that it bends back on itself. Now with two of these drivers operating um, in stereo, um, the advantage we have is effectively a very wide, broad central stereo image. Um, now, how much of that stereo image customers would desire is being able to face the, the, the speaker boxes in or out according to, 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 uh, to needs. Um, I, I have the feeling that we'll see the out the M the uh, 11 MS perhaps in in larger installations, uh, bigger rooms. Um, some people have talked to me about yeah, but if you have such a wide dispersion, what happens when the sound hits the side walls, and and uh, are we going to find that it's going to be much more difficult to uh, room manage this type of driver? Well. That, that is, to be fair, in some rooms that is a possibility uh, with such a large and wide dispersion. Um, technically, if you've got, um, say, a of a large glass area to the side of the speaker box, that, that could r resonate more than perhaps a drive with more limited dispersion. So, um, in, in this great world of ours, I, I generally try to get to the point on a, dri on a driver design uh, whereby I'm, I'd rather give sort of a bit too much than too little. <laughs> and um, given that we're trying to help people move towards full range technology um, that may well be replacing multi-way driver systems, which if you think about it from a multi-way point of view where you may have one, two, three woofers, a mid and a high. If you then look at the physical amount of cone acreage that, that, that they put out, uh, you're much more likely to have issues, uh, room balancing issues with a larger driver system like that as opposed to a single point source system like this. So it's worth producing um, a cone of this type that allows people to have a wider central stereo image and, uh, and still um, good enough to allow them to make adjustments to their system to avoid any, unwan any unnecessary room gain. Um, and certainly, the, because we produce for the custom market mainly, typically um, it's not unusual to see uh, end users uh, um, making adjustments to their room environment, damping pads and that type of thing. So this driver will, will be just as useful to those end users as any other driver would be where they're prepared to uh, modify their room and their listening room environment. Um, but nevertheless, the, 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 
the technical advantage of the negative camber cone at the end of the day is that it, just in my opinion I, I think the technical advantage is that it, it really does have um, this, this sort of wonderful telephonic band from it um, from you know sort of four or five hundred hertz up to four plus five kilohertz around there um, just the sheer sh shape of that of that central area of the cone and the dust cap just lends itself to becoming a really sweet uh, a, a sweet telephonic band driver with the added bonuses of being able to do bass and being able to do the high end as well all in one unit um, and uh, it, 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 it doesn't really compromise that much in other respects as I said I've just showed you you know in the previous video just how much um, uh, how much oscillation this driver is likely to be able to produce and um, given that the whole powertrain weighs less than four grams it's quite capable of going past 20 kilohertz which is more than good enough for most people.